The problem reads, the temperature of 2.5 moles of an ideal gas increases from 13.5 degrees centigrade to 55 degrees centigrade as the gas is compressed adiabatically. Calculate Q, W, delta U, and delta H for this process, assuming that the specific volumetric heat is 3R over 2. Okay, so what do we have? As always, that's what we write down first. First thing we have is N equal to 2.5 mole. And we have T1 equals 13.5 degrees Celsius, and T2 equals 55.1 degrees Celsius. And what else do we have? We have CVM is 3R over 2. And we need to calculate Q, W, delta U, and delta H. And we have the key word here, adiabatically. Adiabatically immediately means that Q is equal to zero. So we're looking for W, delta U, and delta H. We know that delta U is equal to W plus Q. And since Q is equal to zero, that's W. So we either need to calculate W or delta U. And so delta U, this is zero. So we can calculate W and delta U at the same time, but we need a formula for that. Do we have anything that tells us how to calculate delta U? And the answer is yes. We have delta U is MCVDT or delta U is NCVDT, whether, where we have the molar heat capacity. Well, that M right there means molar heat capacity. And we have our N, so we're good. So we have N and CV, and delta T will be the difference between these two. So we have a formula, and we have all the information for that formula, so let's put it in. So this is 2.5 moles. Uh, we have CV is 3R over 2, so 3 times 8.3146 and that's joules versus mole kelvin divided by 2 and then times the dis difference in these and why can we write kelvin it's because if we add 273 to both of those they will the 273s will cancel so this is indeed kelvin so our units cancel, we need to have joules here, let's see, moles with moles cancel, Kelvin with Kelvin cancel, and we're left with joules. So let's get our calculator. We have 2.5 times 3 times 8.3146 divided by 2, and then times a parenthesis, 55.1 minus 13.5 and the parenthesis and parenthesis enter 1297 joule w equals delta u equals 1297 joules and that's the answer to the second part of the question the first part was here so we've done q w and delta u we're down to delta h so what do we have with delta h that we can use we have several different formulas. We know in basic that H is equal to U plus PV. So delta H is equal to delta U plus delta PV. And we have an ideal gas. So we can use the ideal gas law and say that that means that delta H is equal to delta U, which we have calculated, plus uh, delta NRT. And these are constants, so just delta T. So delta U plus NR delta T. And we have delta U, we have delta T, we have N, and we have R. So we're good to go. So we have delta H equals delta U is one, two, nine, seven joules, and then plus N is 2.5 moles, plus 
plus, uh, times R is 8.3146 joules per mole Kelvin. And again, the difference in the temperatures, which is 55.1 minus 13.5. And again, let me just repeat that because there are differences in Celsius, and Celsius has the same degrees as Kelvin. This is Kelvin. And notice that, again, we cancel the moles, we cancel the Kelvins, and we're left with joules. So we just need to calculate. Let's get our calculator. So we have 1297 plus 2.5 times 8.3146 times, and we'll do the parenthesis again, 55.1 minus 13.5, and parenthesis, enter. 2,162 joules. 2,162 joules is delta H. And so this is the answer to the last part of the problem.